The man who shot and killed Florida teen Trayvon Martin is released from jail this morning. Some big bucks go to a small Montana school to help boost graduation rates. And a quick burning fire tears through a local stables. Those stories and much more right now. You're watching the Color 8 First News at 5. Very good evening and welcome to the Color 8 First News at 5. I'm Sarah Gravely. It was a heart-wrenching day for dozens of people who lost their horse in a morning fire. 19 horses died in a stable fire on 70th Street West. These horses were more than just pets. They were elite athletes that have been bred for shows and worked with for years. Little remains of the High Plains stables, but the community of riders who call that barn home will live on. It's just a happy place, you know, and now it's just in ruins. It's devastated. Martha McDowell owns High Plains Stables. Two of her horses died in a Monday morning fire, and she is not alone in her loss. My horse died in that fire. Barn manager Sheila Bachetti says there was nothing average about the 19 horses that died. This is an eventing barn where we do dressage, um, stadium jumping and cross-country jumping. Every single one of those horses was very, very special. The scene left behind, a nightmare for the dozens of people who boarded their horses at the barn, but the blaze itself, in a building made of wood and packed with hay, was a nightmare for firefighters. It's incredibly sad. It's a great loss, and, and you wish there was something that could have been done, but it is just a situation where nobody could have done anything. 19 high-performance horses were in this barn at the time of the fire. These horses can cost anywhere up to $80,000, but people we spoke to say it's not the money they're concerned about. We all lost a much-loved family member in that fire today. I just feel numb and I feel very sad for the horses that we lost. The horses and the barn may have perished, but the community surrounding this barn survives. The young girls and women taking comfort in each other as they mourn the loss of their horses. Looking at the grief on these girls' faces is especially tough for Sheila Bachetti, who's worked with many of them for years. I would take the horses' place to save them from the anguish they're feeling. It's the kind of camaraderie that will pull this family of friends through. And we will rally. It's just, it was such a happy, positive group. And we do have a lot of good energy and we can build on that, but it's not going to be happy and positive for a long time. Now that building was insured, but Martha says it is too early to know if they will rebuild. The overwhelming emotion at the scene this morning was grief. The riders spent countless hours with their horses, did not even get a chance to say goodbye. Tomorrow, the Humane Society will host a grief counseling session for families who have been affected by that fire, but it appears it will be quite some time before their lives will ever return, return to normal. Now, fire investigators are still on the scene of the fire at this time, trying to find a cause. Color 8's Nicole Grigg joins us now live from the scene with more. Hi, Sarah. Reporting live, Nicole Grigg, Color 8 News. All right, Nicole, thanks very much. And in a release just released from the fire department, they now estimate damages at more than $1 million on that fire. And we will continue to bring you more as we know it. 57 days after Trayvon Martin was killed and 11 days after being put behind bars, George Zimmerman walked out of jail this morning with no indication of where he might go next. Jay Gray is in Sanford, Florida with the very latest. Jay Gray, NBC News, Sanford, Florida. Conditions of his release include a GPS monitoring bracelet. He'll have a curfew and be required to talk with a probation officer every three days. Well, it is April in Montana, but it sure felt a lot like June in Florida today. Here's Brad Carl with our first look at weather. Well, good evening to you, Sarah. Yesterday and the rest of the week as well. I'll have more details on that coming up. But in the meantime, back to you, Sarah. All right, Brad, thanks very much. A Billings woman faces animal cruelty charges after allegedly attempting to neuter a dog. Billings police say animal control officers issued the misdemeanor animal cruelty citation today to 20-year-old Jessica Garman. Garman allegedly tried to neuter a two-year-old pit bull mix several weeks ago. The dog was rushed to Yellowstone Valley Animal Shelter where veterinarians performed two emergency surgeries to save his life. The person who brought the dog in claims that they had never seen him before. Officials say Garmin could face jail time and a $1,000 fine. Staff at the Yellowstone Valley Animal Shelter named the pup Rocky after Rocky Balboa because, as we can see, he is a fighter. They say he is healthy and now available for adoption 
For more information on how you can adopt him, you can visit color8.com and click on Connections. White House lawyers say no staff members engaged in improper conduct in the Colombian prostitution scandal involving Secret Service agents and military personnel, but congressional investigators are still asking questions and predicting that more agents will lose their jobs. NBC's Jennifer Johnson has our story. Jennifer Johnson, NBC News, Washington. And whatever the outcome, it will be a quick investigation. Members of Congress want their questions answered by the head of the Secret Service by April 27th. A U.S. district judge orders settlement talks in the case of a Livingston woman who was shot by a man apparently obsessed with her daughter. 81-year-old Thomas Cairo shot and wounded Georgia Smith last January outside her Livingston home. Kairos was shot and killed by officers following a standoff. Police say Kairos was obsessed with Smith's 19-year-old prodigy of a daughter. Smith is seeking payment for physical and emotional damages from Kairos' estate and has requested a judge rule in her favor without going to trial. But Friday, U.S. District Judge Charles Lovell denied Smith's request and ordered the case enter settlement talks. The pain at the pump is easing just a bit, though, as gas prices drop nationwide for the first time this year. Prices fell more than five cents a gallon over the past two weeks. The average price for a gallon of regular is now $3.91. In Montana, the price per gallon is down two cents to $3.75 a gallon. And here in Billings, the average price sits at just $3.72. Experts say the drop is tied to a stagnant price for crude oil that combined with sufficient supplies of finished gasoline have allowed prices to fall. And still to come here on the first news at five, a Montana school gets a big leg up from the federal government. Find out how the money will be used up next. But first we turn again to Brad. Well, as we said before, a very warm day hitting your weather authority. Color 8 weather is brought to you by Perkins. Here's Kristen Kershane. Welcome back, and I actually am just returning from a weekend trip to New York City. How where was that? It was great. We went to see the Statue of Liberty, and I don't know if you can tell, sporting a farmer's tan. A little bit of a sunburn. Yeah, though. sunburn, which it is actually in dress. There you yes, go. it brings out the red <laughs> in my dress. But also a concern today at that fire, a lot of people putting on uh, sunscreen this morning. For sure, yes, yeah, especially because it's been so warm, and we haven't been all that used to it yet. We're just starting to get things ramped up into the 80s. Taking a look now at your party, America Sky Kelly cooling things down to the weekend. Weekend still looking pretty dry, and then we'll see an increased chance for more showers into Monday and Tuesday of next week. We wait all year for a forecast like that. I know. <laughs> it's kind of nice. You get a nice, nice little early taste of summer. It is nice. And we also like to recognize when schools do something out of the ordinary. And Lame Deer is one of eight schools nationwide to receive federal funding to further education of the arts. Lame Deer school teachers say they are struggling to keep students from dropping out. Federal officials say providing art and music to those students will keep those kids in school. They say students involved in art and music perform better in other subjects like math and science. Lame Deer will receive $20,000 over the next two years for new art supplies and musical instruments. What is exciting about this initiative is that it deploys extensive research and studies that demonstrate that the combination of arts and education in the schools helps students achieve better and prepares them for success in school and innovative jobs. Now Mark Zuckerman says half of the nation's dropout rate comes from just 15 percent of underperforming schools. He expects the new educational initiative will change those numbers. Still to come here on the First News at 5, it is Donate Life Month. We meet a young Billings girl who survived thanks to one of the tiniest donors. That is up next in medical news. Stay tuned. The Color 8 Medical Minute is brought to you in part by Billings Clinic. Welcome back. April is National Organ Donation Month, the time when we hear transplant stories from across the nation. But we have our very own success story right here in our backyard. Here's Color 8's Laura Kennedy. Thank you, Sarah. On Donate Life Month and Organ Donation, visit color8.com and click on Connections. Back to you, Sarah. Laura, thanks very much for that story. Still ahead here on the First News at 5. An unusual sea creature is caught on camera. That is up next. Stay tuned. 
Business owners know they not only have to watch out for thieves in their stores, but these days they must also protect themselves and their customers from hackers. Small business owners from the Billings area learned firsthand from fraud experts this morning. They say hackers can load malware, viruses, or trojans in systems that aren't adequately protected, and they access credit card information from anywhere in the world, making transaction systems vulnerable. One expert says he's seen 10 to 15 cases like this in Montana in the last four years, so they are working to prevent future cases. If they want your information, they'll find a way to penetrate that system. But don't allow yourself to be the low-hanging fruit. Try to protect yourself as best as you can. Put some of the security layers in place, and you might be better off. And finally tonight, a group of scientists working in the North Pacific have documented what they believe is the first ever sighting of an all-white adult orca whale. Scientists from the Far East Russia Orca Project spotted the whale twice during expeditions off the coast of the Bering Island in August of 2010. Experts say he is only the third all-white orca found in the wild since 1970. Two other white orcas have been spotted in the wild by the group, but Iceberg that's what they're calling him, is the first fully grown whale orca ever found in that wild. And it is wild to see That's that. That's pretty cool. Yeah. I've never seen something like they that. They believe he is 15 to 16 years old and is fully grown. Well, very cool. All right. Thanks for being with us. Have a great night.